Shabbat Shalom. So as you know, this week we are observing Martin Luther King Day. It's one of the, it's a holiday that comes around every single year and every single year I look at his life and I am inspired by things that he said, things that he did. Um, and I think there's still so much that can be unpacked in many of the words that he presented and shared. One of the things that I think that is most interesting is what happened in the speech that he gave on um, the day before he was struck down at the Lorraine Motel on April 4th, 1968. And he gave this speech that was in many regards prophetic in nature. And he talked about, and if you recall, the reason that he was there was that he wanted to support people in Memphis, specifically the sanitation workers who were engaging in a strike to mobilize people in a mass march the next day. Why? Well, they of course wanted more rights, safer conditions, more pay, etc. the things that frankly most people want um, when they're looking to, to work. However, so many people I think forget specific parts of that speech. Maybe they remember that it was in prophetic in nature, but there was one of the speeches that he, there was a specific part of the speech that I just want to highlight this evening. And that was that he was sharing the parable of the Good Samaritan. This parable tells the story of a man who was lying injured on the side of the road between Jericho on its way to Jerusalem. And a priest walks by and does nothing, and a Levite passes him by and does nothing. Um, and the Samaritan who passes by actually does stop. And he helps the injured man. And King articulated the understanding in the story as follows, quote, the first question the priest asks, the first question that the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But then the Good Samaritan came by and he reversed the question. and He said, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? The question before you tonight, the question is, if I do not stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to them? This is the question. And he used this story in in the context of the sermon um, to point to those on who are on the sidelines for whom we often will walk past whether we are anybody and demand that we all reach out and struggle and help those in the margins but the truth is is that we live in a society where there are people in the margins there are people who are struggling there are people who are poor oftentimes because of things like systemic racism, parts of our history that we don't adequately address. And for many different reasons, we love to think, oh, I'm not them. And I don't necessarily have empathy for them. We embody and believe so wholeheartedly the American myth that we can well pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and reach our highest potential. But the truth is, and I think Judaism offers a specific path to help us go from point A, recognizing that, well, there's the American myth, to point B, deciding that we're actually going to do something and help somebody. The altar of Chem, Rabbi Simcha Zissel of Ziv, preached and wrote that there's a prerequisite that needs to come before any of us engage in righteous behavior. He entitled it Radical empathy. He called it Nose Baal Im Havero, that we need to carry the burden of our fellow human with him. This radical empathy is the ability to use one's imagination in order to understand somebody else's pain, in order to really understand their suffering, in order to do what's necessary and ultimately to walk a mile in someone else's shoes somewhat challenging, I think, for all of us or many of us to do, frankly. And yet, in many ways, that's what's needed. I will share a very personal story. For instance, when I was younger, I grew up and I didn't necessarily experience racism. Well, I didn't see it. Therefore, in my own mind, I didn't experience it. And if I didn't experience it, I doubted whether or not it even existed. The older I got, the more I became aware, the more understanding I, I got that there are many different experiences in this country. There's, of course, the Jewish experience, 
the Protestant experience, the African American experience, the Native American experience, and all of those stories, all of those narratives are just as valid and just as important and possess quantities of truth unimaginable. <laughs> and not in elevating any of those stories does not diminish the truth of somebody else's narrative. It wasn't until I found myself standing on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel, looking in the room where King was the night before he was assassinated, a room which is still preserved by the Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, that I realized that I needed to develop my own sense of radical empathy. And I began on a very powerful journey of developing that sense of learning and engaging an understanding of African American history and the history, frankly, of a lot of minorities, not just Jewish, but many. Because if I don't understand where they come from, I can't understand why they're talking about the things that they're saying and why it is that we still see police brutality the way that we see it and we still see people's lack of empathy and concern the way that we see it. We still see the plight of people from different economic classes, different races, different backgrounds. If we're not able to fully embody and understand their stories and the validity of their stories and imagine ourselves in their position, then how can we decide that we're going to stand up and act? How can we decide that we're going to follow the, the words of Abraham Joshua Heschel and pray with our feet or pray with our beings in essence and do something? How can we embody the words as mentioned by Eric Yoffe that all reform congregations do and at engage in activities of social justice. If all we're doing is simply living out the words that Isaiah told us not to, praying, but not and fasting, but not taking care of the poor, the widow and the orphan. In order for us to really take care of the poor, the widow and the orphan, we do need to have radical empathy we need to stretch ourselves, move beyond ourselves, even make ourselves uncomfortable. We need to see how other people live and experience it, even if only in our imagination. And it is a challenge. It's scary. It's hard even, and it might make you feel even just a little bit uncomfortable. But I want to encourage you to walk through that discomfort. Think about how other people are living their lives. Maybe it will give you just that little bit of empathy that will push you to pray with your feet and embolden you to act for the benefit of somebody else rather than, frankly, sitting on the sidelines. Something that King was so wonderfully accusing everybody in that church that night, the night before he died in Memphis, of not helping the sanitation workers. The truth is, is that there are lots of sanitation workers who still need our advocacy, who still need us to stand up for them. And so may his words ring true. May they ennoble us to go beyond ourselves and may we have the courage to extend our heart to the experience of many others. Can you hear at own? May this be God's will.